inner borders are done, so that means it's time for the outer borders. Hi everyone, Kristen Som here, and we are continuing with our Nativity Bench Pillow with our sponsor, Cala Quilt Company. So yesterday we did the inner borders, and do you love them? Oh my gosh, I love them. I think that that was so fun with the, the glitter sand, very fun. I absolutely love how the, this turned out. And I decided to do my inner borders with the, uh, what was it, uh, sand castle. So you can see it a little bit. Um, I was going to do blue and I just wasn't sure about it so I ended up instead of the gold like they recommend I used the the sand castle and so it does stand out a little bit you can see the words I really like how it turned out I think that that was just really really fun so now today we are going to do the outer borders so the outer borders grab your packet we only have a few packets left pretty exciting so outer borders are on page 24 of our booklet and it's just got our outer border fabric so let's grab that and i am going to turn to the fabric page first so i can tell you so um like i mentioned on the inner border so we're going to do them very similar we're going to add on the glue stick or at least that's the technique i'm going to show you you can do it however you want but that's the technique that i'm going to show just like before where we took off uh that first and second step the placement and the tack down of the um, batting and then we'll just run through three four five of those steps so just like I mentioned yesterday, so if there is a traditional quilting column and then there is the quilting in the hoop column. And so on the inner borders, I used actually the traditional because I didn't want to have to cut those inner borders again. But on our outer borders, I did use this outer column. So that's the one I'm going to tell you about today. All right. So we will have to cut it down afterward, but um, but that will be easy to do on these. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about these. So they're, they're all navy blue fabric. So I went over in the prep video how to tell them apart. So you can see, I mean, they're pretty similar, especially when you're looking at that little tiny picture on, the, on page four that tells you which one is which. So I'm just gonna go through them real quick. So the first one is the blue swirl. So this is outer border one, all right? Outer border one is um, the blue with the swirls on it. And we want five pieces, five of these are going to be four and three quarters by four if you're doing the quilting in the hoop method. All right, four and three quarters by four and we want five pieces of that. And then we also want one more and that one is going to be a little bit bigger at five and three quarters by four. All right, five and three quarters by four. And that just means that this one, the larger one, is going to be on the end. And I'll show you in photos exactly the layout so that you have it correct that the longer ones will be on the end and we'll cut it down at the end all right so that was for outer border one so the smaller is 1a and then the longer one that is 1b all right and then for two number two of our outer borders it is the blue with the dots on it all right the blue with the dots on it and this is for number two and we want five pieces that are four and three quarters by four four and three quarters by four so sideways all right four five pieces sorry five pieces that are four and three quarters by four and then two of them we're also going to have at five and three quarters by four so those are the end pieces right five and three quarters by four for two of them I did stabilize all mine we're gonna quilt them but that is up to you whatever works for you that's for 2a the smaller one and the 2b the the two that are the longer all right two that's number two for the outer borders so number three for the outer borders is the one with the lines all over it all right and we want five oh this one's oh yeah I sorry my mistake sorry four of these we want to be at four and three quarters by four, just like those others, four of them at four and three quarters by four, and then one piece that is five and three quarters by four, five and three quarters by four. All right, that's for um, number three. So number three A is the smaller ones, and that one that's going to be on the end, that is three B. All right, those are the products that we're going to need today for our outer borders. And like I said, I will show you in photos the... Um, the order that they're going to go in. I will do that part in photos. So let me just tell you real quick about the quilting. So I also, I didn't cut my batting yet. We will need batting 
So we're going to have to measure our quilt, um, or I'm sorry, our pillow. And if I recall, mine is 37 inches long. And so that means that I want 36 and a half inches of uh, batting, but also I want it to be, I think three, let me think here. It might be two and a half. Um, three inches times length of board of project for the batting. So I think our overall size, because our our fabric was three and a half. When after we cut it down, it's going to be three and a half. So that means we want our batting to be three inches, and then times the length of your pillow. You have to measure your pillow. If I recall, mine is thirty seven inches. So that means I want a half inch smaller than that. So I want three inches by thirty six and a half inches for my batting. All right. So make sure to get your batting, because we are going to quilt this in the hoop. So we are going to quilt this with Border Christmas 6 in a 3-inch design. Border Christmas 6 in a 3-inch design. And I haven't pulled it up yet. I haven't looked at it to see what will work. Um, but of course, it depends on your hoop size. So we'll have to look at them and see what will work for your hoop size. Um, I figured it out for the inner borders. I did the 1x14, then the 1x12, and then the 1x14, but that was specific because there were words. This one I think is like a village is what, if I recall looking at it. Um, so I'm going to pull that up on the on the computer screen and I'll give you a visual of, of what that looks like and so that you can start to figure out what will work for your hoop size and for your quilting. All right, so that's what we need today. Let's go ahead and get started on those outer borders. I'm at my computer now and I'm just going to give you a visual of um, the different outer outer border options and um, how to put them together in a hoop if you choose to do so. Um, excuse the squiggly lines on the monitor. I think it's the light in this room, but um, it does that at night. So anyway, sorry about that. Um, hopefully the microphone is working well though. <laughs> we're, we're, we're having trouble with technology lately. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up from Brilliance Essentials. That is the embroidery software that I use and highly recommend. I'm going to go to File New Page, and it says I'm on my 7 by 12 hoop. I don't know yet what I'm going to need. I know that I want 37 inches of quilting, though, so um, I'm probably going to need a bigger hoop. But let's just see what we've got to work with. So I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File. And it's asking, where's this design that you want me to open? And I have it on my desktop. And so I'm going to open up Nativity Bench Pillow um, Border Christmas 6. That is in the quilting bundle. And let's see, I use Pez for my machine. And we want the three inch design. So there's a um, one inch and a two inch. So scroll down from those and go to the three inch. Look at how pretty that is. All right, there's also four and five and six, wow, very cool. Isn't that nice that we get so many options with our Kimberbell download? All right, so I'm gonna open up the three by 10 to start with just so we can get size information. So if I click on it, it'll tell me down here at the bottom, it is a three and a half inch by seven and 15 16. So almost eight inches, I'm gonna write that down. So I've got that, um, this is the 10 inch design and it totals up to just under eight inches. 7 and 15 sixteenths. All right, so that is the 10 inch design. I'm just going to move this over for now so we can do a comparison. And I'm going to go to merge stitch file and I'm going to open up the next one. Again, I want the three inch design. There's the three by 12. I'm going to click on that. And let's see, this one is three and a half by 11 and three quarters. So this is the 12 inch design equals 11 and three quarters. Okay, um, so that's a pretty good size right there. I would like the 14 inch. I'm going to go ahead and change my hoop size just so we can see it. So if I go to um, this preferences folder here, I can click on my 9 by 14 hoop and say OK. And then I go up to this compass button and click H for hoop. And see that shows me my design options a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to just move this one over here. All right, and then I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File, and I'm going to bring in the next one, which is, I believe, the 14. Let's see, 2, we want 3 inch by 14, 3, not 4, I'm in the 4, sorry, 3 by 14 right there. Oh, that's pretty. All right, so that gives an, a whole scene. That is really nice. I like that one. 
All right, that one, the size is three and a half inches by 13 and 15 16. So just a tiny bit under 14. And this is the 14 inch design, 13 and 15 16. Okay. And then I'm going to bring in the seven inch, which I probably won't need, but just in case and because maybe I do. Notice it turned red here because um, I don't have it. It's over the hoop somewhere, and that's okay for now. All right, so I'm going to open up the 3 by 7 design right there just to get an idea of what size that is. And that one is actually 3 and a half by 7. So 7 inches is 3 and a half by 7. All right, so now we have to just think about our hoop size and think about what will fit well to equal out to uh, 37 inches for mine, depending on what size your pillow is. So if I did, let's see, the 13 and 15 16 twice, that would give me 28, and I need 37. If I did the 10, it's too small, that's 8. So I'm thinking probably a 14, 14, and a 12. So let's just see what that adds up to. Um, so it's 11 and 3 quarters, so 11.75 plus, I'm going to just say 14 and 14 because it's super close to that. It would be just a tiny bit under, and that gives me 39.75. So I will have, excuse my dog drinking water, you can probably hear that. Um, I will have a, almost 3 inches extra, no, 2 well, almost three. So I'd have two and three quarters um, of extra quilting that will just run off onto the to the uh, stabilizer, or it would run off onto the excess um, border. But it's not going to matter as long as I've got my batting the right size, okay? And I did forget to mention batting, so I'm going to have to add that in. Oh, did I say batting is going to be three inches times? Um, the length of your pillow minus a half inch. So for mine, it would be 36.5. I did mention that. Good. Phew. All right. So um, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with 14, 14, and 12. And I'm going to just look real quick and see the design. So if I did two of those and then one of those, that will work out perfectly. Perfect. You can see that they all um, will work together very well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete um, the 10 inch and the 7 inch because neither of those will work for me. And I do want the 14 and 14, 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, New Page, and I'm going to go back to that tab I had open, and I'm going to click on this 12, and I'm going to say Control-C to bring it over here without having to import it. You can do either way will work fine. But on here, I'm going to just delete it, that 12 inch. I don't want the 12 inch. I want two. I'm going to have to do two hoopings of the 14, and then one hooping of the 12, and I need that on both both sets. So I'm going to need 14, 14 together, and then um, another 14, 14 together, and then a 12. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly here. So that is already in the center. It's pretty close. So I'm going to, oh, before I do a control, I was going to do a copy, but um, I need to remind you that you can take out steps one and two. This is the placement and the tack down of the batting. You will not need that if you're adding the batting on just like I'm going to show you and like we did for the inner border. So you can click on those and, and hit delete. I need to leave it in there just to remind everyone to bypass it for those that aren't using software. Um, so I'm just going to change that one. Since I've got the default one blue twice, that won't, that will join together and it will be a problem. So I'm just going to do this first one that you don't even need, need to have. You can delete it. Um, so I'm going to just quickly change that to dark aqua and then that one is all ready because nothing else is the same. So they will, they will do a color sort well. All right. So I'm going to say control C to copy that, um, design and I'm going to say control V like victory to paste it. And I say that just because sometimes it's hard to understand if I'm saying B or V, it's V like victory. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to move it over. And I'm in my nine by 14 hoop for this 14 inch design. You can see it's pretty close, but there's plenty of room because we don't really have too much extra of our fabric. So I can even move this over just a bit more. All right, so that gives me room in between, um, and this is great. So I want to go ahead and I want to do a color sort on this now. I'm going to go to Utility Color Sort because you can see down here in the bottom right-hand corner I have 10 steps, and I can get that down to 5 and save a lot of time. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do a color sort. Make sure you have these same settings that I have here. These, these are not checked and tolerance is at zero. And then you can get the, it will reduce it by five color changes. So I'm going to click new view to check and make sure it did what I think it should do. And I'm going to go to, um, let's see, this first one is the placement of the batting. That's the one you don't need. And then number two is the tack down of the batting. Again, you don't need that. Um, and then the third one, the placement of the strips. You do want that because we want to make sure to line it right up within that. All right. So you absolutely want that. And then this fourth one will tack it down. And then the last one, number five, is our quilting design. So that's perfect. I'm going to do a file, save stitch file as. Like I mentioned yesterday, if you do it as, then it's not going to um, save over the original file. All right, so I'm going to go 3 by 14 um, <clears throat> outer border times 2. All right, that's what I'm naming mine. And then I'm going to go ahead and send it to my machine so it's all ready for me. Send to Solaris XP1. If you don't have that option, you can just save it to a USB stick. All right, so that one's done. Super easy, super fast. All right, and then let's see, this is that one that had the two designs. I can go ahead and just delete this because I put it onto the one design. So that's how you can tell is, by the way, if you ever notice this where it, there's nothing over here and you're like, hey, what's happening? Just click on it and it comes back. I don't know why it does that, but just click in there and it comes back. So there's the one that just has um, both of those strips in one design. <clears throat> All right, and then... That one's done, so I'm going to go to this one that has that 1 by 12. Remember, I need to do a 1 by 12 design as well. Sorry, my throat's still not quite back to not being sick. All right, so there's the first one. I'm going to go ahead and just move this over here. You can use your mouse or you can use the keyboard, the arrows on your keyboard, either way. So same thing like I did on the 1 by 14. I'm going to go ahead and change that first color. I just click on 1, 1. And then I'm going to come down here to the properties tab and change the color. It doesn't matter what color and you don't need that. If you are going to put the batting on the strips like I am, you can just delete steps one and two. I'm just doing it so that when I do a color sort, it won't be a problem. All right, there's that first one. I'm going to say control C to copy it and control V like victory to paste it. And it goes right on top of the first one. So it doesn't look like it's there, but you can see in the objects window that it is actually there. And then I'm just going to move them both over to the side <clears throat> so that I have room for my extra fabric. All right, and this one can be moved over as well. You have to click on the stitching for it to move. There we go. All right, and that's done. I've got the two designs. I'm going to go ahead and do a color sort so that it'll be all um, grouped into one design. And instead of 10 color steps, I'll have five. So utility color sort. And don't forget these settings, tolerance zero. And then we have five color changes, new view, because I always like to check it just in case it did something I didn't think it should do. There's the placement for the batting, the tack down for the batting, the placement for the main fabric strips, and the tack down of the strips, and the quilting. Perfect. So I'm going to do a file, save stitch file as. <clears throat> Sorry. Um... And I'm going to name this 3 by 12 outer border times 2 because there's two and one hooping. Oh, you know, and I don't need my big hoop for this. So I'm going to I'm going to save it and then I'm going to fix that. I don't think it matters on this end, but actually it will because they need to move. So I have to show you something. I just realized I made a mistake and this is why it's really good to have the so see we've got the designs all together. We have Where's that one that's together? There's the two that are two different designs and then the one that came all together. So I made a mistake. I want to show you this. Now, I, I don't want to use my 9x14 hoop. I don't need a 9x14 hoop when this design isn't that big. So let's see. Yeah, see down here at the bottom, it says 11 and 3 quarters. So I could use my 8x12 hoop and then I would be saving on stabilizer. And if I had already closed out these files, then I probably wouldn't even bother, but I can do it. And it gives you an opportunity to learn from my mistakes. So let me just go ahead. I want to go to this first design here where I've got the two, because if I did it here, let me show you. If I change my um, hoop size on here, it won't let me move these because now they're together in one design. There's only one design. I will not be able to move them. 
So that's why we keep that extra tab and we always check it. So here's the old tab that has those three by 12 designs in two. And if I go up here to the preferences folder and I change to my eight by 12 hoop, let me find that real quick here. Eight by 12 right there, click on that, say okay, and see now I'm over the hoop. So that's why I need to be able to move them. And the only way I can move them is before the color sort, because once you do a color sort, then they're down to one design. So you have to do it where it's got the two designs. All right, and so now I can go ahead and move those. And you want them really close here because this hoop is smaller. All right, clicking on the second design and I'm just gonna move it over. So it's not over the hoop and I'm gonna move it up just a bit. All right, so you can see it's gonna be a lot tighter of a fit. So you could certainly do your nine by 14 hoop if you prefer but I'm gonna go ahead and do it on my eight by 12 and save some stabilizer. All right, so that is done. Now I wanna do that color sort again, because remember this tab that has, let me see, is this the, that's the nine by 14. This is the one right here, this nine by 14. I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. I'm gonna say, nope, that was a mistake. And I'm gonna go back to this one that has the eight by 12. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that color sort again. Now that I've got the two designs, let me make sure I did change the colors, yep, all good. I'm gonna to go to utility color sort and it's reduced it by five, new view. So it opens that next tab and see now they're in one design again. So again, if I made a mistake, I would not be able to move it because I've already done a color sort, but I have that older tab where it had the two designs. I hope I'm not totally confusing you. All right, so there's our placement of the batting, tack down of the batting. And again, you don't need those first two steps the placement of the main fabric strips or the outer border strips. Um, and the fourth one is the tack down of those strips and then our quilting design. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna hit H for hoop just to make sure I'm zoomed in. All right, so that's perfect. I've got it down to five color steps and I'm in my eight by 12 hoop for this one. I'm gonna say file, save stitch file as, and all I'm gonna do is since I already made that one, I'm just gonna save over it. So I'm gonna click not on that one by 12, the three by 12, there it is, three by 12 times two. I'm gonna click on that design and say save and just go, hey, wait, are you sure you want to, re to replace that other design? And I'm gonna say, yes, I made a mistake. I caught it, it's all good, don't worry. All right, so that is done. I'm gonna send it to my machine, send to Solaris XP1 or send it to your USB stick, whichever works, and we're good to go. Let's get stitching our outer borders. everyone, I want to talk to you about logistics for just a minute. So on page four, remember I told you that there's these two columns, right? One is for traditional quilting and one is for quilting in the hoop. And I thought this was a really good idea at first because when we do the filler blocks, I always recommend that you cut them a half inch larger and then we cut them down to size at the time because um, then your stitches won't pull in and, and so on and so forth. But for the borders, I've decided that that's not a very good idea. I don't like it. So I originally cut all of my border pieces to this, um, to the bigger size, the one on the far outside. I ended up cutting all of mine to that size and then we'll cut them down after assembly, right? After we quilt them and after we have it all together. Well, 
there's a problem with that idea. So let me just show you what I came up with. Um, and I need to talk to you about the batting too. Don't let me forget. <laughs> You're in charge of remembering. All right. So here is our placement stitch, which you very likely can't see, even though I stitched it twice for you. Um, I did it once with the, the sand color thread and then once in the marlin blue so that we'd be able to see it. But my point is that once you get that placement stitch, we always put our border strips within that um, placement box. See, you can see it here. Um, and, and we go on from there. Well, if our border strips are too large, then you're centering it and you can't see to be able to get it within the line. So it's easier in my opinion to do it this way where um, it's cut to size, not the length, but the width so that we can use that placement box and keep it straight. If you don't do it, if you want to have it at the, I think it was like four and three quarters size, the, the, the larger width, that will still work because what's going to happen is you're going to center it and then it will tack it down. So really it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but the problem is that then your batting is not exactly right and the whole thing could be off a little bit. So I decided, I changed my mind. Like I said, I originally cut them to the larger size for the in the hoop quilting, but then I decided, nope, I don't like that idea. So I cut mine down and I haven't quilted them yet, but I did go ahead and I, I cut them down to um, the regular size. So the regular size for the traditional quilting um, I believe it was three and a half. Let's see. Three and a half width. All right. So the length is still the same. It's still that four and three quarters um, length, but the width. So when I say width, I mean this part. Okay. The width of it. Um, I did cut it down to the traditional quilting, which is what then I won't have to cut it at the end. So those, I cut it down to three and a half inches. So it was really simple. I just used my ruler and I cut a quarter inch on this side and a quarter inch on that side. And I actually did it from the batting. I did it from the back. So I have a quarter inch on this side, a quarter inch on that side so that I can have my straight batting and a quarter inch on each side. So I did end up doing that. So I just wanted to mention that to you. I did that before I'm going to quilt it. And, and I think that that just works better for me. All right. So that's one thing. The other thing was the batting. So on the batting, I wanted to point out that my border strips, after I sewed them all together, they're pretty long. I actually already trimmed them a little bit, but they're quite long. And so the problem with that is that to get the batting centered right, because remember we want our quarter inch seam allowance on each side that doesn't have batting in the seams. And if there is batting in your seams, the world is not going to end. It's okay. But why not try not to get them in the seams? Because you really don't want bulky seams. So what I did is I cut two pieces of batting. Um, the full length of the Kimberbell batting um, is like 19 inches, if I recall. So I cut two of those for each of the long strips because the strips are... I don't know how long, probably 38 ish inches, something like that. Um, and so, and that may work out fine for yours. So my, my seam allowance may have been in just a little bit more, but I only want 37 inches. And so the problem is that the batting isn't going to be centered. And so what I did is I cut one piece, one big long piece of batting, put it in the center and I'll show you in photos that I, I measured it. I just folded it in half and measured from there. And then I cut the other piece of batting in half and I put one on the right side and one on the left side. So that way I've got some extra um, fabric that won't have batting in my seams, but it made it so that I could measure it out right. And again, yours might be um, longer or whatever. It doesn't matter. But the point is just to get the batting all the way um, and trying not to get it in the seams. If it's in the seams, super not big deal. And then you don't have to worry about all of this. But anyway, I just wanted to point out my fix and I just, um, I did cut down my outer borders, the width part, and then I cut my batting in a way so that the big centerpiece and then the two side pieces so that there is a, a little bit on each edge that doesn't have um, the batting. So we'll see how that goes.
my shirt today. This is a really great shirt because it's so cold here. I woke up this morning and it was 23 degrees and it said it feels like 16 degrees. Oh my goodness, it's so cold here. So this is a great sweater. It's, it's got like this warm neck, but it also has a hoodie. So it's a great sweater. I think I found this at um, Fred Meyer a bunch of years ago and I finally embroidered on it. So the design though, how cute is this? Find joy in the journey. Isn't that right? Like that that's what we're supposed to be doing all the time, right? Is finding the joy in everything that we do. So find joy in the journey. I believe this was a designs by Juju. I'm almost certain it's a designs by Juju design. I will add information underneath this video of where you can get the design. It's definitely a pretty one. I really like this one. It's, it's such a, a good motto to live by, right? Find joy in, in your journey. So anyway, I'll add information underneath this video. So how are you doing with your goal? I kind of wasn't great at it today. I'll tell you, I definitely put my head down and worked, 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 worked. So um, then I remembered that I've got this goal and I'm going to have to tell you what I'm doing on my goal. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that got me moving. So I asked my husband if he wanted to go for a walk with me and we took both dogs and we went for a, a pretty good long walk tonight. It was cold though. It was really, really, really cold. I, I bought a new jacket recently and it is super warm. Like I was putting it on at the store and just like sweltering. It was so hot, but it was perfect for here. But my face was freezing and my tush was freezing because my jacket doesn't go quite long enough. But Anyway, so it's cold here, but I did it. I got out. I did my goal. I went for a walk because my goal is just to get out, right? It's not that hard, but when you're working a lot and trying to catch up after Thanksgiving break and um, so anyway, my, my tendency was definitely to just focus on, on getting caught up on, on our projects. So I had to push myself and, and thank thankful for you guys because if if it weren't for you and knowing that I was gonna have to tell you what I did today I wouldn't have done it I definitely would have worked through and then your body starts hurting and stuff when you're sitting too much and working too hard or staring at a screen too long or whatever it is for video editing and all of that so I did my goal. I got out for a good walk, even though it was absolutely freezing cold out. What are you doing for your goal and how is it going? 